Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the One Click Organizational Chart. In this exclusive training, I'm going to show you how you can create your own organizational chart complete with staff details all from this staff list. On a single click, you're going to be able to generate your own organizational chart just like that. And not only that, we're going to have different styles, so all you need to do is just select a style regenerate and it's going to automatically create. I cannot wait to share this with you. So let's get started. All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a fantastic training, the organizational chart. One of the most important things in business. I'm going to show you how to create it in just a single click. This type of organization chart is used throughout the world for businesses, but it takes a long time to create, but not anymore. Now it's a single click. All we need to do is start with a basic staff list and the supervisors, their positions and a few other details, including pictures. You're going to be able to generate your own in just one click. And on top of that, of course, we're going to be able to show you how to add in different styles just by a single click and then just generate. It's going to show that in a different style. So we got a lot to cover. If you do like these trainings, I appreciate you visiting us. There's a few things that I ask only and it's very simple first go ahead and click that like button that really helps and comment below i love to hear your ideas on the future training or feedback on this training this training and application is completely free all you need to do is click on the link down in the description below either with your facebook or email and we'll get that sent over to you right away however if you do like to support us one of the great ways to do that is with our 200 work Hook zip pack that's just 77 dollars and it comes complete with a library so you can get a single click to open the workbook or single click to view the youtube video that is a really popular sale i love creating these applications for you because i want to show you how you can make your own money using selling these applications and what i've done is i've put an incredible mentorship course together and now it is complete that means you can now add access all 132 hours of my mentorship course all for a single price we also have a great promotion running now i'll include the link down below you can get to it myexcelmentor.com that's myexcelmentor.com and that's going to show you how to define design develop and deploy your own excel applications for passive income all right let's get started i've got a lot to cover on this training we're going to go over the details of this but basically it's a relatively simple there's one or two macros that we're going to go over it's not going to be a very long training it'll be one of the shorter ones it's probably still going to be around an hour don't hold me to that let's see how long it goes but i want to move slowly and show you exactly how this is created okay so but what we've done is we're starting out with a staff list so we're going to start that out and we have a staff id that includes Includes a staff name and we want a supervisor and we want to make special note those that don't have a supervisor or the one that doesn't would be usually the CEO or president we also have a assigned position of that president our chief financial CFOs and then we have different positions we also have underlings and this is going to be done with a formula underlings is how many people or staff are under them for example Fred has three people under him we're going to create this from scratch and I've got this is the sample one so Fred has three underlings Mary Dave and Peter so while Mary has also three underlings Lisa Greg Perkins and Anita here and David has two and then we have uh, Larry, uh, Greg has one under him and Lisa has one under her. So there's different ways we can do it, but we also want to track how many people are under them. So notice Dave has two, Peter has none, Mary has three. So keep that in mind. That's very important. Also, what we want to do is level. One thing we're going to be programming in is the level. I want to know what level. Let's consider Fred at level one. This will be level two this is going to be level three and this is going to be level four now we can do up to five or six or seven levels really however many you want we've got an unlimited number of levels and i'll show you how to do that once we do the vba code but it's relatively simple at least that part of it is but that's very very important when we're from a programming standpoint we need to know how many levels i also want a picture we want to have a picture and if there's no picture or let's say something some picture is spelled wrong or you don't have a picture i do want a default picture so if we run that organizational chart and notice i've changed david pictures so we've got a default picture which is kind of nice that we're setting up in case we've uh, had a let's say there's an incorrect 
uh, spelling or something like that or we just don't have the pictures we can at least have that very very helpful having those default pictures and also want to know the row that this is situated on so that's all the data we need that's it that's all we need row three four this is corresponding to the row here all right so the first thing what i want to know is i want to know the underlings we call them underlings or staff that's under them fred has three just as i explained to you one two three right so how do we do that all we need to do is count use a count if if it's empty we're just going to make it empty if b3 is empty it's empty otherwise we're going to use a simple count if formula we're going to count i've got a named range called staff supervisor that's this in column c we'll go over that named range in just a moment and then all we're going to do is i want to know how many times fred was used as a supervisor notice fred is three times and we're going to do that. That's three. So that's how we're going to get the three. Let's go over the few of the name range. Not very much. Just a few of them here. And I'll bring it over here. So we've got some criteria and extractions. We'll go over. That's for the unique advanced filters there. Then I have a staff ID. That's going to be an offset formula based on the staff ID. I don't even know if we're going to be using that. I've got a staff name here based on the main staff name. Right. That's all the staff names. We're using offset to create that so that it's dynamic, so that as our list increased, so does that named range. And then lastly, we have a staff supervisor. That is it. Relatively simple for this. So I just want to keep track of those names, staff supervisor. So staff name. So that's pretty much it. So level, this particular one is not generated by a formula. It's generated by VBA. I want to know the level. So if I delete that and rerun it, it's automatically this is what i like so we don't necessarily need to know the level of it but i've run that organizational chart it's going to automatically come back here through vba because vba is going to tell us what level they're on these are all in level two dave peter and mary are on level two if we know mary dave and peter are all on level two and then we have five of them on level three and two on level four two on level four and the rest on level three so vba is going to take care of that because we need to know what level as we place these images all right then we have a picture now the pictures are located in a folder and to do that we've got an admin section and the admin section is going to contain just a little bit of basic information the first thing i want to want to know is what folder are those tags so make sure when you get that if you decide to put in some pictures have a folder that's you know, our folder does contain those pictures here so we see in this folder here i've got the pictures so located along with the default picture so this is the default picture picture called default picture it is that default picture that i've assigned right here so it is the entire link i didn't use a browse so just kind of basic you can add a browse button here if you want but that's incidental then what i want to do is i want to have a style i want to be able to choose the style this is a very simple macro we're going to go over all i did was just create a macro and then place the check marks and if we notice here located right inside f5 style changes accordingly Okay, so if I style one, style two, style three. So if I select style two, and then I run an organizational chart, it's automatically gonna be that style that has changed. So let's go into the macros for just a minute. So I just wanted to bring a few things out. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna create these macros with you, but I've already done. So I've got a sample here that we're not going to use, but we're gonna use it for references as we're, because as I am creating this, I wanna refer back to it. So we'll use this sample. So I've got two workbooks and here's the other workbook. This is the original, there's nothing here, right? So I haven't created any. If I click this button, nothing's gonna happen. We're gonna create this macro live, but I've got this workbook. So we'll switch back and forth and I'll keep you because I do want to refer to that. So again, let's just do a few things. One, we've got different levels here, level one, level two, level three, and level four. There's another thing that I want to notate. We want to control the spacing, right? We want to make sure we control the spacing. Just keep in notice that if there's a certain amount of space between this group right here, look under Mary. Mary's got uh, three underlings, three staff that, that look up to her, that follow her, and we want to make sure. Then we've got a little bit of additional spacing here, then Mark and Jack. So keep that in mind as well. So they're gonna be different. We'll go over that, but just keep in mind, I've separated the spacing just a little bit on those that are not under it so they can do that all right notice peter doesn't have anything under him also notice that if you make a change so let's just take a quick look under the staff let's say we decide larry's now going to work for anita so we just put in larry and let's say we want him to work for anita it's going to automatically change so now when we change that organizational 
and we can see now that Anita is now placed there and also Anita so now noted automatically changes and updates okay just so we, we understand that that okay very good so let's get into some of the macros that the first one macro I want to go over with is this one we'll just go over real quick this is a few lines of a macro I'm gonna go into the developers alt f11 we'll get you there we'll go into the visual basic okay so let's take a look let's I've got two workbooks open making sure that this is the sample that includes all the VBA code that that it's working and then we've got um, organizational chart macros we're gonna be writing just two macros today one called organizational levels that's gonna set our levels and we've got another one that's gonna actually create the chart okay so those are the two macros that we're gonna be creating there's one I wanted to go over with you and that was this one here select style see how what a little bit of code it is it's very simple that is the macro that's been that runs this so how do we know that? well the first thing we want to do is when we create something like this and we want to change the style with it is I want to really focus on the shape name so I'm going to open the selection pane here and we take a look at some of the selection panes take a look at the style one group this is the group that's associated notice that every single shape inside the group let's bring it out a little bit more here notice that every single shape is called style one if I name every single shape and same with style two the group the groups don't matter in other words the group header the group can have any name itself because there's different subgroups but every shape style two style two every shape inside that contains the word regardless of the shape if I select on anything inside here whatever that shape name is I'm gonna place that shape name right here whatever the shape name is I'm gonna start so notice that I've specifically spent a little extra time naming those shape very very specifically that is the exact style that I want to assign inside f5 so once we know that once we do that work and we assign those names it's very easy so again with the admin sheet what we're gonna do is I'm going to take the name of the shape this the application call remember if you try to run this macro it's gonna create a bug application caller is always going to create a bug if you try to run it from the VBA that type of macro must be run from when clicking a shape why because it's looking for the shape name Sh name of shape okay that is the name of the shape they called it but if you're running this macro directly from this play button here nothing is going to happen okay so keep that in mind so I'm going to take the name of that shape whatever slogan I'm going to place that in F5 the next thing I want to do is I want to move this checkbox I've got a checkbox a little check mark I should say this check mark is called check mark obviously and all I want to do is I want to place this according to wherever we select it so basically I want to position that check mark based on the shape that's selected right that shape here it's called style for group style for group okay so I want to place it there so all we need to do is with the check mark we're gonna place it to the left of the application caller style for and the word group left 90 or the top is going to be the admin remember we have to call out that sheet again because I'm inside the shapes here admin dot shapes application caller right in this case style one style two style three and the word group because what I want to do is I want to call out that entire group and notice the names of these groups they're all very specific so notice the space here style one so this is the shape inside and then all we do is add the word group onto it so now I'm placing this check mark based on the selected style so that gets there so that's very very easy just a few lines of code I'm going to place the left position uh, basically to the you know the left position of this group plus 90 so if it was just on the left position it would be right on the left part of the group so if I took away the 90 here and I decided to run it it would show up right on the left position but I'm going to add 90 because I want it to show up on the right side that's it that's all we have to do and then we're going to place it a little bit less than the top position that's it that's all we have to do for the macro the most important thing is is to set this style here under F and that way it is that style that we looks up inside the organizational chart when we run it okay so keep that in mind all right so also inside our organizational chart what I've done is I've created some samples here right this is these samples that we're going to get duplicated we've got sample one group and I've got a connector sample one now all of this is is a circle all it is is I've created a circle and I've put a picture in here if we were to do that again right all I would do is just create a shape just create a circle here like that then what I'm going to do is I just want to add a fill so when we format that and all we do is shape fill and we're going to add that picture so I select a picture and I want to select that specific picture that I have so in this case it is this picture here so that's all we've done here okay and then the rest is just a simple uh, rectangle here 
and I've done it and, and I've given the name staff description. So that's all I did here. And then I grouped them together. So we're going to call this staff description this is the same regardless of the color staff description, staff picture. The only difference is the groups are named different. This is called sample group one. This is called sample group two, three, four, and five. And I've done the same thing with the connector. This is an independent connector called sample connector one, sample connector two, sample connector three. Notice that the numbers correspond with the numbers here, style three, style four. So that means that if I want to determine what group we're going to use, all I need to do is remove, when we've selected it, remove the style and the space, and it's gonna leave me with the number five. If I know the number five, I could have just put five here, but it would have been you know, a little bit more simple to put style five, and then we understand exactly what's going on with that. So now, if I wanna to refer to this group, right, based on this, if I, if I know we've selected style one, and I wanna get this sample here, all I need to do is extract that one, which we'll do in VBA and then add the word sample group and then I've notated it and the same thing here all I need to do is extract that one and then just add the words sample connection so that's how we can differentiate between each one of these samples and it is that one that we're going to be able to generate the chart based on that so that's pretty much the overview of what we want to go over and how we want it, the style is and now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside VBA we're going to start writing up the first macro that I want to focus on with you is the macro that's going to organize these levels. Now, this macro is going to run every time we create a chart, but I want to do, I want to get those levels. I want to know if we've got blank here. I want to know that uh, Fred is on level one, that these are on level two, because if it changes, right, we need to update this. If there's a staff that makes a change, we need to automatically update these levels each and every time we run the organizational chart. It is these levels that are gonna help us write the macro to generate those pictures and generate that style and, and also the connectors that connect them. We will also be using advanced filters and where we have some criteria that's been set up and then we have the result of those filters coming here. We're gonna go over that, but wanna write in that code. So let's get those levels. It's a relatively easy macro. So we're gonna write that right now. All right, let's close this up here and I wanna go into the organizational chart here. We'll keep this sample open because we may need to refer to it. That's the sample. And but I want to go in here. Okay, first thing, we've got a lot of variables that we're going to cover. We've got a leader, a string. I don't even know who the leader is. The leader is the president or the CEO, or he's the one leading everybody. He's the top person. I also want to know a supervisor as we... I know this, I want to know who the supervisor is of a specific uh, staff name is the actual staff, the ID of the staff, the superior ID, I want to know the ID of the superior and the picture name as a string. Also, we're going to need a picture file. What is that picture file and a position? What is their position? Uh, are they president, CEO, or they uh, CFO or whatever picture folder? What is the folder location? And I also need to know the default picture. Okay, I want to know the staff rows. We're going to loop through those staff rows. The level is at one, two, three, four, five, right? The last row, if we're going to be uh, running our advanced filter row, we need to know the last row. Of course, that's going to be the last row of all the staff as we run our advanced filter through that. So we're going to need to know that. And so also what I want to do is I want to have the result row as we run through results from our advanced filter and the last result row. A previous quantity, we'll be going over these. I just wanted you to familiarize yourself. I need to know the previous quantity. That will come in. What style is it? Style one through five. We need to keep that as a long variable, right? That's going to be found staff row. We're going to do a found leader row. We're going to, we're going to do a find so we can find them. We're going to define the chart as a shape, right? We need to know those individual sharps, the level quantity, how many levels, and the level number. So we'll keep that in mind. I'll go over that with you as we go. And then also the left position or the center position, right? Those are positions as we move this chart around so that's going to be double just like the top position and the shape width and the shape spacer and then the previous level so we need to basically get all that information here all right so let's get these levels in so i want to get to the last row in this macro then what i want to do is i want to first thing i want to determine who is the president the president doesn't have a supervisor so that's going to help us determine who the president or ceo is so that's the first thing we're going to do inside this macro so let's do that right now we're going to focus on pretty much one sheet for the most part so with staff is the sheet that is this that is the sheet that has all of our staff on it the first thing i want to do is determine the last row and that last row is going to be equal to the uh the last we'll use column a on that that's the last row of data we need to run an advanced filter so we need to get that last row if the last row is less than three then we can exit the sub 
okay so we know we don't need to go on if it's less than that first thing what i want to do is i want to find i guess as i mentioned to you i want to find that row that has no supervisor i want to look i want to know who the top guy is who's your top boss right i want to know what row that's on and of course that's going to be the that person that doesn't have a supervisor so that's going to be because we have to set our level one we know that is so what we're going to do is going to find that we're just going to look inside that so we're going to do set our found leader range as equal to dot range and we're going to use the find so first thing we're going to do is based on that staff and then underscore supervisor remember that is the name range set up for all the supervisors supervisor okay supervisor but what i want is i want to set find what is find i'm looking for in this case i'm looking for the empty space i'm going to look in excel values and i'm going to look in the excel hole okay so we're looking for that looking for that first empty one locate let's put a note in here locate staff without supervisor if found is nothing let's this let's write it out so that if it's not found we can exit the sub out there's nothing we can do if we don't have the top guy okay if found is nothing found in this case leader range is nothing nothing then exit the sub if no leader exit we got to have that because we got to know the level one so if it's nothing right if it's found if if we're writing something we want to know it's found we'd write if not found that means it is found but in this case we don't want it found okay if it's not found nothing okay now assuming that it is found we can continue on so we can do is dot first of all i want to set that leader that's in column f so dot range f we can set that row what is the row and found leader range dot row what is that value it's going to be equal to one equals to one set the first not 21 set set first level okay good so we've set that first level we know who the leader is and we set it so what i want to do now is i want to run an advanced filter and i want to know in this case i want to know the second level how would i know the second level the second level would be anybody any person who in which fred is the supervisor so if i put in fred here and I run an advanced filter, it's gonna tell me every every specific staff that has Fred. And so it's gonna return these three, these three. That's what I want. I want to run an advanced filter. So then what I do is I loop through those and I add those to two. So first thing I want to do is clear out anything that might be in L. So let's do that right now. So dot range L3 through L, and it's just 999 anything, dot clear contents, dot clear contents. That's gonna clear previous criteria so next up l3 is going to be equal to what it's going to be equal to fred equals okay and then in this case whatever our staff name is and our staff name is located on b so i'm just going to copy this i'm going to change it to b equals b here so there we go so now what we've done is we put that staff name or that supervisor name really in co in this case so that's going to go directly inside l3 so we're going to set that supervisor name for level one now we're ready to run our advanced filter so we can do that let's initially set the last row three what i want to do is i want to set an initial last row because in this case i know the last criteria row is going to be three right so i'm going to run an advanced filter and i want that criteria between the l2 and l3 l2 and l3 however that three i want to put in a variable and that'll come in handy in a minute so what we're going to do is we're going to do the last result row equals three initially and it's going to change okay so the last result row now we're ready to run our advanced filter right after we enter a loop so basically what i want to do is i want to loop through all of the levels starting with level two right starting with level two and go all the way to say to five but you could go more if you've got a larger we'll just sort of five four level equals two to five because we're going to do this next level okay so now we're ready to run that advanced filter so now we're going to run that advanced filter okay so how do we do that filter is going to be based on this we're going to start at a2 all the way through h that is going to be our initial data so and then of course the last row a2 changing this to h we've already set our last row here so we've got that our criteria is going to be a little bit dynamic so we're going to start it out in l and go to the, the dynamic field which is the last row and that'll come in handy and i'll show you why in just a moment so normally l2 and that's l2 all the way through l and instead of three what we're going to do is we're going to do this last results row and the last result row okay so it's going to be dynamic in the first case the first time we run it, it's always going to be three but since we're looping we're going to make a change to it in the next time okay where do we want those results to go well i want those results of that filter i want it to go inside 
P through W. So I'm going to change this to P, and I'm going to change this to W. That is where our results are going to go. And right here, so here's where we have it. So the last row, W. Then what I'm going to do is I'm, I also want to know how many underlings the supervisor. If here's a supervisor, I also want to know how many do, but that's going to come in a little bit later. So in this case, all we're going to do is just get that results and put them in here. Later in the next macro, we'll focus on this part here. So we've done that here, and now let's get that all the way in through W. We're going to bring in those results there coming in there w unique equals true now we're going to set the last results row so now the last result row equals in this case we'll use uh, p column p is going to set our last results row last result row equals dot p99 and x left go so last result row okay so if the last result row is less than three then we need to exit the cell or we, in this case we'll just need to go to the next one so but we can probably that means there's no underling so we can move on there's no staff below that but we can do something like this last result then let's say go to just in case go to no results so go to no results we could also do and and something and we can then we'll go down here no results okay, that'll essentially exit out of the sub here so we can go actually go out of the loop here right there okay next level let's fix that not no g in there so now we've got the last results row and now what we can do is continue on so we've got those results rows so we, what do we want to do so let's say let's say the results come in here and we have three people right we have dave peter and mary those are the three underlings for each one of those i want to set the two here but how do we know well we know the row that row is going to come directly in here so it's going to be row three or four five and six so i'm going to take that row whatever the original row is and i'm going to update that level i'm going to put a two here i'm going to put a two here and i'll put it two here based on whatever rows here and put it in column f so that's the next line of code that we're going to write so we can do that with a loop because they're all going to be two so for the result row is going to equal three to the last result row and then next result row so what do we mean by that that means it's going to start out at three so three i'm going to go from three four and five all the way to the last one determining whatever row the original data is in here and then updating that level column to whatever level we're on okay so that's all we have to do in this case it's going to be two but we're going to loop we're starting at two and we're going all the way to five so the result now we can do that so now we can just set that result row dot range f we know the column we want to place it and what is the results row where's that results row it's located in dot range inside w dot range w and the result row and the result row dot oh it's already there dot value so that is going to take on equals the level set level level as we loop through that so all we're going to be doing this macro is just going to update it so now what we've done we've gone through all three of these right we've determined the row we've updated it we've up, put it to here put it to here now we're ready to go on to three but how do we get three well what i want to do in this case is i want to take these staff people i want to put these staff just like this copy this basically and then paste the values now what i want to do is i want a criteria i want to use and and i want to run an advanced filter i want to know anywhere inside this table where these three are the supervisors right so for example mary this one here right in any case i want to know that right so then mary would return now I, will, I have more results right so look there and also dave here and dave here so they would return all of these results right that advanced filter so anywhere any one of these three names are used so we've got our results here right these three people came in here and the results so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these three names i'm going to copy them i'm going to place them right here these results now become our criteria as a supervisor so we can then get every time that they've been used so then i can return all of these notice i want to return all of these in an advanced filter and then it is all of these that are going to become level three we're going to do it last time and to do level four so that gives us level three and four inside our code so that's all we do we just have this loop right now so the first thing what we want to do is clear the contents of level three so again i want to run this here i'm going to run this and just clearing any contents now what i'm going to do is i'm going to place dot range l3 through l and the last results row last result row equals what equals basically i'm going to take whatever is located right in here q3 and the last results row so equals dot range 
Q3, Q3, and the last result row dot value. Okay, what that's gonna do is set next criteria. And all we're doing is taking these names and bringing them down here in here. And it's gonna bring them right down here and then we're gonna run the advanced filter from that. Good, I'm glad we got that. All right, let's take a look at that. So we've got it, that's all we need to do. It's just gonna run that loop. So once we have that next criteria, we run that advanced filter again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear out these levels and we're gonna let VBA go take over and complete that for us. So there we go, let's take a look. One, two, five threes and four perfect okay that's exactly what we want we've got our level set now we're ready to run our main macro that's going to run that the first thing that what i want to do is i want to copy this and i want to make sure we run that every single time we create that chart so that's the first thing that we're going to do first thing i also want to do is i also want to get that style we have that style as a long variable up here so i want to determine what style are we going to use one through five style is going to be equal to Okay, we're going to use the replace in this one because remember I said I need to extract that number. Admin dot range. Where is that located? It's located in F5 dot value. That is the style. Remember, that's the style that we've set right here. Style It's going to be located in F5. All I want to do is remove the words, the text style and the space. All I want to do is remove that because it's going to leave me with whatever number I want. That's how we do it. So I'm just going to do that inside that. So we're going to use replace. And what am I removing? I'm removing what's called style and the space. And I'm replacing it with what? Nothing. What's that going to leave us with? That's going to leave us with that number. That's it. That's going to be the style number. Now that we have that, we can use that to determine what style we want to, to use. Okay, good. So we're going to focus, again, with mostly on the organizational chart sheet. That's a with organizational chart. Click the period to make sure that we've got the IntelliSense and we've got it right. Okay, so with that, first thing what I want to do is I want to remove any shapes that are associated with the organizational chart that might already be here. There's none in here, but I want to remove any if they are. So to do that, we're going to set some specific names when we create them so that we can easily remove them when we need to. So if, so we're going to do for each chart shape, we've already created that dimension that as a shape, chart shape in, of course, dot shapes right what do we want to do so we're going to close our loop next chart shape so it's just one line of code if in string we're checking for something chart shape dot name i don't want to delete every name in the in the of course in the sheet only those with specific criteria and what is that criteria those names that are have the text chart item chart item making sure your samples here don't contain the word chart item you know they contain sample groups so there we don't want to delete these so we want to make sure the names don't have those names associated so we're going to delete everything that's called chart item so how do we do that if chart item does not equal zero that means it's been found that those characters are found within that string in that case we want to delete it so then chart shape dot delete so delete all chart items items okay that's sufficient so that's all we need to do let's fix that chart shape dot name does not equal chart shape dot delete then there we go so now we've deleted them all okay so now what i want to do is get some variables we've got a lot of variables that we need we got a picture folder and things like this so let's do that pick folder is going to be equal to the admin dot range and that's going to be located in f3 dot value it's going to be the picture folder location picture folder location and i also want the default picture so what is that the default picture is going to be equal to in this case it's going to be f4 so we'll just copy this here and put that in place that into f4 that is our default picture in case there's no picture we need to set up a default default picture file name so once we have that, I also want to know the last row of the staff. So last row of the staff is going to be equal to, and this is going to be the staff. We need to call it the staff sheet here, specifically on that staff sheet. Last row of staff. All right, once we have that, what I want to do is I want to determine if we found the supervisor. I want to do basically the same thing we did up here. So we can do that just here. All I need, in fact, we could probably do this. Let's, let, if found staff row, 
Gonna, we don't need to set the level, but I'm going to copy this here. We need to look for the leader once again. That's important. So to do that, we're going to, if the last row is less than three, then exit the sub. That means we have no data. Set the found leader role. We're going to look for that. Again, I want to call out the sheet here. Remember, we're not on the staff sheet, so I have to call out specifically on that sheet. If the found leader row is nothing, then exit the sub. There's no leader, so there's nothing we can do. Once we have found that leader, I will then want to take that leader and want to get his name. So the leader is going to be equal to staff dot range where's it located in b and the found leader the names are located remember the names are located in column b here that's where our names are located id is located in column a so i want to get that name put it into a variable okay i also want to get his position uh, here located in d so we'll put that into a variable as well i guess we can keep it on here for now and then we can continue on with the code so staff b and the leader found leader range dot row that's the row that's been found a dot value name of staff okay that's fine now what i want to do is i want to get his id and i also want to get his position so we need to get all that and to do that we can just copy this here and then we go i'll do the staff id we want the staff i want to know his id is going to be equal to a right it's located in a staff id then the position so we can do this position is going to be equal to in this case what is located in d so now we've got that information because it is that information that i want to play inside those chart objects so so we're going to call this position very good so we've got the leader we've got his name we got his number we got id this should be staff id staff id and then we have that staff id is located up here in the text making sure that i've got a name right here staff id that's what i want in a string variable so we've got all the information because that information but i also want to get this picture right i need to know the picture name because i want to place that picture picture name is located where picture name is located in column g so we're going to get that in here column g picture so good i'm glad we have all that now that's just the name of the picture i need the entire file right? i need to combine this name and i need to combine this folder the folder that there's located so f3 admin f3 and the backslash and the picture name is going to make up that complete file name so we need to get all of that and put that inside a variable so that variable is going to be called the picture file is going to be equal to and we need to define the picture folder here too we didn't do that yet so let's do that picture folder is going to be equal to where we'll put that in separate variables so it's a little bit simpler admin f4 folder equals admin dot range f3 okay that's going to be the picture folder location picture folder location so we've got that now we're good we did do the picture folder we did do the fault and so now we can combine them so let's put that up there picture file i want the entire file it's going to be basically the combination of all of those so combination the picture file is going to be equal to the picture folder and the backslash and quotation okay backslash and what else the picture name okay there we got it. picture file name okay so we've got the entire picture file names right there but what I want to do is I want to check to make sure it's accurate, right? We don't want errors if it's not accurate, if there's something issue in the folder. So let's check it. If directory of the picture file VB directory equals empty, then we don't want to do something else. I don't want to set the default picture. So if it's if there's something wrong with the staff picture, we want to set the default picture. Then the picture file is equal to default picture that default picture set right up here in f4 right so we're going to set the default picture to stare but what now what i want to do is i want to make one more check if directory a picture file checking again vb directory where we get vb directory if it's still blank then we have also a problem right if it's still if there's no default picture equals blank then what i want to do is i want to set the picture file equal to empty okay so then no picture at all all right, so that way we have the, the directory of this, even the default picture is empty, then I'm just gonna set this variable to be empty, just so there's no bugs. Okay, so now we can move on. Now we're ready to start with the level. So what is the first level? We're gonna set that as one. So level, this is gonna be a variable, level equals one. Set initial level. So once we've got that, I also wanna set the initial left position. Is gonna be equal to, now where do we wanna place it? I'll put it somewhere right around, let's say, D5 right here. So I'm going to put that initial left position right around D5. And I want to set the top position maybe around uh, D3 or something like that. So that should be sufficient. Let's go ahead and add that in here. So I want to set that initial position. So the left position is going to be, let's say, dot range D5. It's not going to be the value, but in this case, dot left, dot left. Set 
initial left position. We also need to set the initial top position. So the top position is going to be equal to dot range. In this case, we can do, let's just say, uh, D3. D3, any column would do it for this one, dot top. Okay, three is the, really what we want. We want that row, top. Set initial top position. So once we've done that, we, we also want to set a center position. I want to know the centered position because we're going to have to recenter things when we need to. So the center position is going to be equal to the left position plus, right, what it's going to be based on, basically it's going to be the plus of the width of this shape divided by two. So whatever the width is, so that means if I place that here, I want to divide that by two, okay? So that's what it's going to be, the width of that. So basically have that plus, in this case here, we'll add this dot shapes, sample group, and the style, remember, and the style. I want to know that dot width divided by two. Okay, so remember, it's the sample group plus whatever the number is. That's our style number, so we need to call it that. I want to split this. I want to know that. So that means this is going to be exactly the center position. Okay, so we know the center point. We're putting that as set initial center position. Great, so once we have the center position, now what I want to do is I want to set the shape width. Shape width. I don't want to put that into variable too because that's also going to help us. Shape width. In this case, it's equal to dot shapes. Again, it's going to be basically just this right here, here, right? All we need is just this right here, dot shapes. That's going to be it. That's all we need. Set the width. Set group. Let's call it group width. Group width. We've got the width. and we're Okay, so now what I want is I want a spacer. Remember, these are not going to be on top of each other. There's going to be a certain amount of space between these. I'm going to put that inside a variable as well. Shape, spacer. Is going to be equal to let's just set it at 160 okay create spacer now if you want it spaced more out you increase it or you want it less than less so that's pretty easy to set in a variable so the first thing what i want to do is i want to duplicate this i want to create our initial we've got our we've already got the president information right we've already detailed that all into variable we've got his name we've got his id we've got his position we've got his picture we've got everything so all we're going to do is duplicate this group like this then what i'm going to do is i'm going to position it i'm going to set his picture i'm going to set his name and we're going to do all that okay so that's all we need to do so the first thing we want to do is duplicate that sample shape so we can do that with this line of code here dot shapes instead of with dot duplicate we're going to duplicate it we're going to set an initial name for that group and okay? that's very very important so we have that there and what is it going to be is going to be equal to remember that those specific text called chart item that's the one we're going to be and I want to add his staff ID so I can differentiate between every one of them. Remember, his staff ID is unique to this staff. So this one's we're basically going to create new shape. Okay, so we're creating that new shape and we're naming that new shape. And now what we want to do is we want to work with that so we can focus on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here. And then what we're going to do is with shapes. So now I want to work with just that shape. So with dot shapes. That shape here, we're going to do some work. Not there, there we go. So now end with. So now I want to work with that because I want to place the top position. I want to place the left position and so on and so forth. So dot, what is that? The dot top position is going to be equal to the initial top position. Set top position. Okay. I also want to set the left position. That's going to be the left is going to be equal to the left position. Relatively simple for this first one. Set left position. Okay, next up, what I want to do is now I want to add some information. I want to put that picture in there, and I want to put the text in there. So that's part of a group. Remember, we're in a group. So what I want to do inside that group is I want to set the staff picture to the fill the staff picture, and I want to set the text to the staff description. So we're going to do that using the group items control. So dot group items. And what is that group item that we're going to focus on? We're going to focus first on the staff picture. Staff picture is that picture. And what I want to do, I want to fill it. I want to fill it with what? I want to fill it with the user picture. And what is that picture? It's going to be that picture file. That's it. Pretty simple for that picture. Next up, I want to add the text, right? So the group items, this case is going to be the staff description. Remember, that's that shape that's placed in there. And what do I want to place in there? Dot text, text frame two, dot text range, dot text. And what I want to place, I want to place two things in there. I want to separate it by a new line. So we can do that with just this line of code here. Text, in this case, is going to be equal to the staff name, first line of code, 
and what we're going to do is I want to do a new line. So that would be VB, CR, LF, and. And then what else I want to do? I want to do is position, right? That's the next thing. So in this case, position. We've already defined that. That looks good. In fact, if you're not sure about the, like I always mess up the variables, I just put it in lowercase. And if it goes to uppercase, perfect. Okay, so now what we've done, we set the position. That's all we had to do. That's it with that group. Okay, good. Saving our work. So again, all we've done here in this point is basically put the picture in, put that in here. That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and if we run that code to see how we're doing now, and let's fix this variable staff. It should be NM, not, not an, I think staff name like that. And then run this. So see how we're doing here. Okay, good. So we've got that CO president here. Got to get his name. Let's update that name. His, his name got cut off. So poor guy, poor guy, staff name. So we look up here under a staff name here. We called it leader. Let's do staff name. Running it again. Perfect. Okay, so it looks really good. I like that. Excellent. Just the way I noticed it cleared it all out. So we've got our first president. Fred Fredders is our president and we've got him. Okay, so now what we can do is we can continue on with the rest of them. So the first thing we want to do is update the top position. This is the only one at this position. So everything else is going to be below that. So I'm going to increase that top position because everything else is going to be below that. So let's do that right now. Top position is going to be equal to the current top position plus, let's say, 110. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a loop. We're gonna run a loop based on those levels. We need to do all the other levels. For the level is gonna be, we've already done level one, so now we're gonna focus on two to five. For level, we can run a loop and do all the level, is gonna be equal to two to five. Make sure we close our loop, next level. So everything's gonna be between this code. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to get all of the staff for this, we're on level two right now. So I'm going to run an advanced filter. I want to put the level here. That's why the levels are so important. What I'm going to put two here. Then I'm going to run an advanced filter with this criteria based on this data. So everybody with a level two is going to be returned. We can then loop through those, creating those shapes for only those level two. So that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing inside M3, I need to put that level in there for that criteria. So staff dot range M3 dot value equals the level okay set initial level set level criteria because we're going to run an advanced filter and we need to get that okay so once we have that criteria we're ready to run our advanced filter and it's going to be pretty much the same thing as this advanced filter here so we can just copy this and then we'll just update we do need to update that criteria but it saves us a little bit of typing here so we do have to call it the sheet staff in this case making sure we call it this staff in this sheet and we need to update this criteria it's just going to be m2 through m3 m2 through m3 that's it and the results are going to also go to p2 so we're going to print those results from p2 through w and that's it then also we need the last results so it's going to be based on three this one if the last results are less than three then we can go to no results but we do need to update this to staff and we need to put because that's but make sure we have staff we're calling out the sheet staff here and also staff here that's very important to call it the sheet and then we'll put no results down here no results once we have no results we're done right so there's nothing else to do okay so no results would go down there okay assuming that we do have results we can do some work with that and so what i want to do is i want to get the supervisor if i've got a list of supervisors in here i know that I want to know what their underlings are. In other words, let's say I've got a list of supervisors. Let's say Fred, Fredders, or whoever's the supervisor. I want to know what their underlings are. I want to know how many underlings they have. So I'm going to get that into formula. If Dave is listed as a result, I want to know how many underlings Fred has. So I want to look it up and I want to get that three. We can do that with just a simple formula. We can place that formula directly in here. We're going to index E3, index the underlings here. We're going to match it based on the supervisor in here. So match, that's why this should be up here. So matching it based on whatever's in R3. And then what we're going to do is return the staff name. So based on the supervisor, I want to return that. So if I take this formula and I bring it down here to only those results, it'll automatically show here. It'll automatically show those underlings. Okay, so that's all we need to do inside the code. So to do that, we've already got the last results. So now we just need to copy that formula down. So we can do that with staff dot range in this case x3 through x and the last results row dot formula is equal to staff dot range x1 formula x1 dot formula 
copy, we'll call it copy down underlings formula. Copy down underlings, underlings formula. So now that we've copied that down, because that's going to really help us. We've got all that. Now what I want to do is I want to run a sort. I want to sort based on those underlings, based on both. Sort based on underlings. And why is that? Because if you saw in that sample, what I want to do is I want to have the most of the underlings on the left side. I want to bring them on the left side. So I want them first, right? Those with the highest number of underlings on the left all the way to the right. Same here. So we're going to do a double sort here, sorting with two of those specific keys. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right. So first of all, with staff.sort, and make sure we got the end with sort based on that. I want to clear any sorts that might be the sort fields dot clear. Clearing any sorts that might be there first. Now what we want to do is we want to add our initial key. So that sort fields, in this case, dot add. And then a key, what is that key going to be? It's going to be equal to staff dot range T3. T3 is our initial underlings. T3, I want that. Most underlings at the top, T3 is going to do that. I want to sort on equals XL values, right? XL sort on values. And then I want the order to be descending. So the order is going to be equal to XL descending because I want the most at the top descending. Okay. Now what we want, let's call this sort staff underlings. And then I want a secondary sort in this case as well. In this case, I want to sort the supervisor. So I'm going to copy this. I want to put a secondary key here. In this case, it's going to be based on X. So X, I, I want a secondary sort based on the sorting, the supervisor underlings, supervisor underlings, and that's based on X3. That's going to be our secondary sort because I want to know, first I want to know how many underlings they have and how many their, their, bo their boss have in that case, underlings. So we've got those and now we're ready to set the range. So set the range and the range is going to be equal to staff range, in this case P3 all the way through X in the last results row. X and the last result row, okay? And then all we need to do is just apply that. Once we've applied it, we're done. That's it with the sort. We're gonna run that sort because that way when I loop through it, I want the most at the top, most underlings, most staff, and then down to least. That way it's gonna go from left to right. That way the most is gonna be on the left side of our organizational, so you can go to the least to right. That's gonna help balance it out better. So once we have that, we're ready to start running our loop through our results. So we do just that here. So first of all, what I wanna do is I wanna set the level quantity. I wanna determine how many results we have. I've got three results here, it's gonna be on row four five, right? The last results row is row five. If I take that last results row and I subtract two, that's going to get us the number, the quantity of the results that we have. So we're going to do just that inside the code here. So the level quantity is going to be equal to the last result row minus two. Let's just say quantity of the results, quantity of results. So we know that. Okay. So that's going to help us. So now what I want to do is I want to differentiate between if the level is two. So here back in our sample here, let's take a look at our sample here. What I want to do is if it's level two, I want to split this between this. If I know this is the center position, basically I want to take all of these and I want to split it down the middle. I want to determine if I know that there's three of them here, then I know that there's three of these and two spacers here. So I want to split it and determine the center so that all the first row, just the first row, is completely centered. After that, I want to tend to lean towards the more underlings would be on the left side, the left staff would be on the right side. So it's leaning to the left. So that's how we can differentiate it. So we can do just that here. So the level quantity is going to be equal. So, so once we have the level quantity, if the level, remember we're looping through the levels two to five, if the level equals two, I want to do something different. Then do something and then else do something else. Okay. So if the level's two, basically what I want to do is I want to center and I want to determine that left position. Left position is going to be equal to in this case whatever is the center position i want to know the center position minus i want to subtract out let's do something like shape spacer plus i want to determine the level quantity minus one level i want to know how many shape spaces right if we have three different results then we have two different spaces between them so that's going to be the level quantity minus one right if we have three results and we minus one, right? We're gonna get two spaces. I wanna know this two spaces, right? And multiply that. Plus, I also wanna add in the shape width. I wanna divide that by two. Plus the shape width. 
and I'm going to divide that by 2. Let's add that in here, divided by 2. Okay, so that's going to get us our differentiated. Let's update that. I need to add one more here. Just the last parentheses on there, and then we're good to go. Okay, so now that we have the left position, what I also want to know is I want to know the previous quantity. I'm going to set how many quantity were before. That will help us out. So the previous quantity, we're going to set that into a variable. Quantity is going to equal the level quantity. How many were before? Save previous level quantity. And I want to know the previous left position. To previous left position, and put that equals also the left position because as that gets updated I want to know what it was before and that way basically if there's only a few different results we're going to be able to put them all on the left in other words if it's one or two I don't want them in the center I want them right under their specific or close to that at least based on the spacer okay so that's going to help us I need to know as we move down we want to know the left position there so that's if it's level two but what if it's beyond that what if it's level three four or five then I want to do something slightly different in this case we'll put this in this is called the remaining levels remaining levels other than two add it we need to add additional spacers add additional spacers spacers onto this so this one's going to be a different left position this one the left position is going to be equal to the center position minus again let's do for shape width plus the shape spacer I want to do the add the add in that shape spacer times how many times what we want to do is the level quantity minus two level quantity minus two basically we're just determining the left position we're averaging out that based on how many staff right we need to know how what's the left position how far to the left do we need to move it over so the level quantity minus two that's going to get us there so once we have that we can then add in the shape with i want to add one more shape with shape width and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide that by two. We want to get that centered. That's going to be our center position. Okay. Also, what I want to do in this case, if previous quantity is greater or equal to the level quantity, and I'll show you why in just a minute as we type this up, and the previous quantity does not equal zero, then the left position is equal to the previous left. And I'll show you why, okay? So now we're just going to update that previous quantity. I'll update the previous quantity. Let's just copy this here because that's all I'm going to do is just going to keep copying that, determining that. And basically, what does that mean? Okay, so let's just say that this row was left quantity. But now what I want to do is let's say there's only pre – let's say there's two in the current and there's five in the previous. If the current quantity is less than or equal to the previous I want to put them on the left I don't want these two all the way in the center right that wouldn't look so good right that's kind of messed up right we don't want that we don't want them centered right so if the previous quantity five is greater than the this current quantity then take that current quantity and bring them over to keep the same the previous left position the previous left position is here, right? The left position is here. So I want the previous left position here. So, But if there's more, let's say there's seven people. Let's say there's seven people here. Then the quantity would be more. This is five. And this is seven. In that case, they can all be spread out accordingly. So basically, we're setting the left position based on how many. This is only two. This left position, right, is five. This previous quantity is three so in this case we can spread them out accordingly okay we don't need to have the same left I don't need the, these left positions on the same as the previous one which is here okay so basically we're just bringing over the left sizing it accordingly remember this is on our sample right this is our sample one this is the one we have we're working on right now just so we can it's easier for me to explain if I have both so we got let's go back into the code here and continue on so we've set the previous level quantity and we're set the previous left position. Let's write that in set previous left position I'm gonna do the same thing here so there's no difference we're just gonna keep checking on that left position as we move through the levels okay so we have that there and that's end if so that's all we need to do basically in this all we're doing is setting the left position setting the left position and organizing that's all we do here based on whatever level now we've got the left position okay so now what we'll do is we're ready to loop through our results our results are here here so now let's see that if we have three results 
all the way we're going to run our loop for level number one to the level quantity one through the level quantity we can do that right inside the level quantity. so we're going to run another loop for the level number is going to be equal to one to the level quantity and then we'll go next level number so we're bringing that in so first of all what i want to do is i want to determine the staff id that's going to be inside p and the level remember it's going to start at one the level number plus two right if we're starting at row three so we need to put that inside a variable i want to get that id number so the staff id is going to be equal to the staff dot range in this case p that's where results coming and the level number plus two dot value that's going to be the staff id so now what we have a staff id what else i want the staff name i want the supervisor i need to get all that information so i'm going to copy let's just copy this here and we'll start adding in those variables so what else do we want of course i want the staff name staff name is going to be equal to in this case it's going to be q so we're putting that in q this is the staff name staff name next up i also want who's the supervisor of that staff supervisor that's very important because we need to connect to the supervisor supervisor is going to be located in r so it's going to be r here call them r supervisor and also what I want to do is I want to know the position of that. So I want to know their position. Position is located in column S. So we can pull that out right here. That is their position because we want to put that position down in the description in the text box. Position. Also, we want the picture too. That's position, not with an S. First time I caught it early. Position. Okay. And then the picture name. Where is that located? That's located in column V. So changing this to column v is going to be the picture name and a of course we're going to do the same thing we did here so we can just copy that remember we did the picture name here for this guy right up here picture folder here all of this is the same right so we're going to combine the picture folder the picture name everything else so we can copy that and then bring it down here and i spelled that's name is not spelled very well there is it now again we're going to check to make sure the picture files if it's if it's an incorrect name we're going to set it to the default picture if that's incorrect we're going to set it to blank all right next up what i'd like to do is i'd like to add a little bit of a spacer when there's a supervisor change let's go back into that notice how these three staff have a certain amount of number of space between them and notice these staff have a little bit more of a spacer so what i want to do is when there's a when we're going down the results let's say there's five results here we're going one result two result three result and when we get to the fourth result i want to look up to the previous result if there's a different supervisor notice the supervisor here is dave notice the supervisor here is mary if there's a different supervisor i want to add a little bit of more of a space between that and inside our results here this is basically what we're gonna do i'm gonna go if it's not the first as long as it's not the first result if i'm here in the second and i look up to the top and i see that this supervisor is different than this supervisor i want to add an additional spacer onto that so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to write a little bit of code to do just that so we certainly want to make sure we're not on the first result so we can do that with this if the level number does not equal one and the staff dot range r remember r is the supervisor r and the level number and the level number plus two dot value dot value does not equal the one plus one so we can just copy this and then does not equal level number plus one right so we're just basically the one above it i'm just simply looking at the one above it if they're not the same that means there's a different supervisor so check for different supervisor we have to put a then on that then what then what do we want to do then basically what i want to do is just add for the left position so then we'll do the end if then we're just going to increase the left position is equal to the left position just going to add plus 20. you can increase this or decrease this as you want increase the left position on supervisor change all right so that's all we want to do there now what i want to do is i want to locate that supervisor right the reason we want to locate that why is that important here if i know this staff is chart item eight staff item eight i need to locate the supervisor which would be supervisor id number four why do i need to locate it because i need to connect to it right i need to bring this connector this connector needs to start here and it needs to end at the supervisor so i need to connect that so i must know the supervisor id the supervisor id in this case is four two 
and three and look at the names here this is where i'm up here so that's what we need to so we need to locate the supervisor okay so we can do that with just a range using the find so we can do that with this so let's write in some check for a different supervisor we did that up here let me put that memo up here this is where we're checking for the different supervisor up here and this is where we're going to locate supervisor id so that's what i want to do right now so we can use the found so we're going to set the found staff range is going to be equal to staff dot range and we're looking at the staff name staff name is that named range that we've already saved dot find and what are we looking for we're looking for the supervisor name supervisor right we've already we've already named that supervisor right here so we already have it in a variable so supervisor that's what we're looking for and we're going to look in excel values and excel hold okay now we just need to see if it's found if not found staff range is nothing then it's been found and we know it's been found then what we do is we can actually put that in a single line then the superior id this idea of the superior is equal to staff dot range a and the, the row that it's on which would be the found staff i need to spell that staff range dot row dot value okay i need to spell this right here staff I need to add it in there make sure okay good so if the found staff is nothing not nothing they cancel each other out then the supervisor id is located in a found staff this is the supervisor id supervisor id okay so now once we have that we can continue on okay so we're ready to duplicate that shape. i'm ready to create the shape so once we have that so we can do that that sample shape again we can do just as we did here in fact we can just copy it up here the everything we did up here because it's going to be the same copying here so this one right here create that new shape and we can probably copy all of this here and then we'll just update it accordingly down below because there's a few updates so now we have this so let's copy that down here and basically all we're doing here is we're going to copy this sample group in the style duplicate chart item and the staff id so we're just simply duplicating it as we did before and now with that we're setting the top position we've already set that we're setting the left position and now what we're going to do is we're going to group those items okay so this group fill user picture we've already set the picture it's either blank or contains it the group items the staff description again here we're adding the text range the staff name we've already def defined that up here we've already defined the position up here so we've got that covered okay so now what we need to do is we need to add on the connectors but just one more thing i want to do before i add that picture i just want to run it, make sure that if pick and i'm going to do this above to name pick name does not equal empty then we want to add that user picture i'm going to add it above too that's a little bit of insurance to make sure that we actually are adding something that will help prevent and i'm going to add that right up here too right where we created right here here right there too as well so for the superior picture and for the individual staff below we're going to do that just to make sure that we have it so now we positioned it we've added the picture we've added the text now all we need to do is add the connector to the superior okay we also want to update the left position the left position is equal to the left position plus the shape spacer we want to add that left position there and make sure we got that variable right okay good we did all right so now that we've added the space we're good with that now we can continue on with our we've got our supervisor id already set up and now what we want to do is add the connector add connector and as you remember we have those connectors already here based on the style right so if we take a look inside our original one here we've got our connectors here our connectors is called sample connector one sample connector two and so on and so forth so all i'm going to use is this text here along with the type to create that connector based on the color so we can do that right here so dot shapes in this case sample connector and we need the style right and that's gonna be one two three four so on and so forth dot duplicate in this case dot name one assign it a unique name is going to be equal to we're going to call it chart item because we want to remove it right when we clear out chart items always got to start with chart item there and i want to add in the superior id just so i can make them unique and i also want to add an underscore here and then i want to add in the staff id here so and also we're going to put in the staff id staff id that's going to make it unique give it a unique name okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that because we're going to work with that okay so i'm going to copy that so we've just created it we've duplicated the one we have we've added a name on it and now we're going to work with it so with 
that shape right here, we're gonna do something with it. So make sure we've got our end width here. Okay, good. So what do we want to do with that? Well, the first thing what I want to do is connect it. And so to do that, we need to add a little bit on. So we're gonna add in this, it was gonna be dot format. It's gonna be the connector format, dot connector format, connector format. That's what we're working with because we're just basically on the connector format. So inside that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin that connect. And where do we want that connection to begin? Well, we want it to begin based on the sheet. So we need to call it the sheet, organizational chart, inside here, dot shapes. Where do we want it? I want to, again, chart item, chart item. And we want to connect it to the superior ID. So, and the superior ID. Remember, we have that already. So, the superior ID, but not just this group, right? If we take a look inside the sample here that we got here, here's the group item, chart item four. This is it, but I really don't want to connect it. I want to connect it to a specific shape inside this group. What group? I want to connect it to the staff description inside this group. So, it's one of the items in the group. That's where I want to connect it, right here into this staff description. So that's what we're gonna be focused on. That particular group item is where we're doing it. So back inside the code. So begin chart items dot group items, right? It's one of the items inside that group. Which item is it? It's the staff description. That's the item I wanna connect it to. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I wanna give it a position. Now the position, right, where do we want it? Remember there's, when we can have a connector, right? I can connect it here, here, here. There's about four different positions that I can connect it to. I think it goes like this. One is the top, two is the left, three is the bottom, and four is the right in this case. I believe after some tests. So we wanna connect it to three. So three is the position. Again, one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna connect it to three. So the third point is here comma three, that's where I want to connect it to. Okay, then what do I want to do? I want to set an end connect, so that's the beginning, but what about the end connect? Again, organizational chart, dot shapes, again, also here, right? In this case, we're gonna connect it to the staff, so chart item, and not the superior ID, but this time it's gonna be the staff ID, so the staff ID is where it's gonna get it. Staff ID, and there, dot group items, and which one do we want it, right? We're gonna take a look at this. Where do we wanna connect it? I wanna connect it to right here, right here. So there's many, many points on here, right? So I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be point number one. Like I think it goes like this, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, like that. So position one, but I wanna connect it to this specific picture inside called the staff picture inside that group. Part of the group items, staff pictures, where we want that connector to connect. So we can do that inside the code here. Okay, so group items, which one? We're looking in this case at the staff picture. Staff picture, again, at the position, which position do we want to connect it? One, which is the top position, okay? That's it, and then end with, that's gonna actually make that connection. If I got everything right, probably not. We have a few bugs that we have to check for. I'm gonna save our work so far, okay. So then what I wanna do, then we're going to do, we need an end if there well the reason is we had that possibly an end with right we, we need to make sure that uh, the supervisor was found right if there's not a found then we're not gonna have a supervisor id so i'm just gonna add something to make sure here just an error checking if superior id let's say does not equal zero then continue on then right so we're just gonna loop that out then i'll put the end if there just want to make sure we have a superior ID. Otherwise, it's, we can't create a connector unless we didn't find the sub supervisor ID. So we've got that there. That's good. Then we're going to go to the next level. I also, before we go to the next level, I want to make sure that we're going to set the found staff range equal to nothing because we're going to reset it again. I want to make sure that we're resetting it, looking for that. Okay, that's for the most part. We do need to, what we want to do is as we move through the next level, once we go to each level, we need to update the top position, right? So next level, so we're gonna do that, the next level number here, no, it's a little bit confusing. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the top position equals the top position plus maybe say 105, right? We're just updating. So as we move through the, f the second one, we need to update the top position, that's gonna drop the next one lower. Updating the top position, gonna to drop the next one lower. As we go through these levels, level one, level two, level three, level four, and possibly level five. Each time we're doing it, we're increasing the top position so that it, our chart moves down. All right, let's take a look at the work that we've done so far. We've got that, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna double check to make sure we got our end width. 
and next level as we appreciate that let's go put this no results that's no results for a single level but uh, I'm just gonna drop it down here in case there's additional results for additional levels we're gonna bring it up a little bit again saving our work let's go ahead and run the code check for any bugs next level number will fix that it ends with a B on that so then go ahead and check on that all right we'll take a look at that let's make sure this is the sample okay this is that we can get rid of the sample all right that's looking pretty good we got to update a little bit of spacing but i like it it's pretty much good to go there we go i like it a lot so let's just update a little bit of the spacing. i think it's almost perfect actually uh, as we can see we've got that separator notice here i'm going to close the sample so that we don't get confused we don't need this anymore save our work before we close it then we're going to just close the sample that way we're only working with one workbook at the same time help minimize confusion it does look good it does look the same as what let's check the different style let's choose a different style go into the organizational generate that chart again now it's creating in red you can make this a little bit faster if we do that notice that we you, you've got this little that comes from the sort you see that one well, let me do that again you see that you see that little if we update the application screen updating it'll get rid of that so why don't we do that on the at the end application dot screen updating equals true okay let's take a look at that see if that eliminates that little mark there Okay, I like that. That looks good. Everything's set up. All right, this has been. Let's let's uh, change the position of someone just so we can see. Let's take Larry and put him under Jack and see if things get switched around. So let's go ahead and put Larry and we'll put him under Jack here, and then we'll change that original and then we'll generate it again. All right, so now he's under Jack. Notice we have our left. Uh, go to the left. That's exactly what I want to change it back to let's say blue again, my favorite color here, and then generate it one more time. All right, that's looking good. We can get rid of the headings because that's gonna give us a little more space. We don't need the headings anymore. Alrighty, it's looking pretty good. This should be centered though. This is one, this, right, these top three should be centered direct. Let me fix that because I think that's just a small issue on the first one. Let's go ahead and go into here. Level quantity should be increased. This should be times the level quantity. Let's try that and see how that looks. All right, looking good. One final thing, we gotta update the sort on these. Notice how these are automatically sorted and it's not kind of really clear. So we're gonna just gonna reverse the sort on that. So this field, sort fields clear. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse the sort and what that's going to do is gonna sort those underlings first and then the staff second. So let's take a look at that and see how that works. That should be a little more clear. And then we'll run the macro. Okay, good. So now we've got this guy. Theoretically, it should be moved over here, but I really like the way it looks here. This is really, really good. All right, good. Let's reset. Let's try to reset that back and see how that works, making sure we're on top of things. Then I'm going to let you go. Generate that. Okay, that's looking really, really good. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. The one-click organizational chart, an amazing training. If you like these trainings, I've got... 200 workbooks in a single zip file for just $77. Well, of course, that's less than 40 cents per template. That would help us out. Well, you could also subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click on the notification icon bell. Comment below. Like the video. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week for another amazing and unique training. Thanks again.